All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Sminify podcast. This is already episode number three, which is crazy to think. This started out as a joke, and here we are on episode three, which is actually episode four, but it's episode three officially, and let's get into it. So, like, I'm here solo today, and I'm here solo because we have lots to talk about. I mean, I guess I don't know how long this episode's going to be exactly, probably not too long, but I just want to sit down and thank you guys because, like, there's probably a lot of new faces listening to this right now, and I think that that's absolutely awesome so this is my uh this is my sminify podcast this is what i do it's my podcast it's weekly i record it on a sunday it's either uploaded sunday night or monday morning this one's probably coming out on monday morning considering i'm currently recording at like 11 at night on sunday but anyway this is my podcast so i pretty much i like to keep it personal with you guys i like to tell you guys what i think how i feel about things and that's what i do on this podcast i think it's important to have that relationship with your viewers so that's that's one of the main reasons why i do this podcast and also I do it just so that in a couple of years from now I can look back and just reflect on the thoughts I had and self-evaluate pretty much and see how I've changed over the years and how my thoughts and opinions have changed, which is really important. Like, I encourage all of us to just like record a video of ourselves right now because like five years down the line from now we're just going to look back at that and we're just going to laugh at it and <laughs> probably laugh at ourselves for being cringy. That's how I look at like all my YouTube videos now. But nevertheless, thank you guys so much for tuning in if you're if you're interested in this podcast, you know, sit down, play a game of zombies, start playing some Minecraft, and have me plan on playing over the gameplay. And if you're not interested, hopefully I can catch you in another video. Thank you. But anyway, this is the podcast, dude. This is the podcast. It's the first thing I got to say is thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers, dude. Thank you guys so, so much. Like, I've always wanted to have this, like, a YouTube channel that's that's steady, that's got constant viewership that's got constant comments that's got awesome people liking leaving comments like I had an old channel called the gaming ninja turtles that ran from 2013 to 2018 which was probably two years longer than it should have I should have just stopped a long time ago and the problem with that channel is we uploaded probably like three times a month three times like every month and like I managed to accumulate hundreds like 500 subscribers at its peak but the problem with that channel is that like every video I posted, I wouldn't get any comments. I wouldn't get any likes. It was just me and my friends watching it, which is, <laughs> that's not a very, like, it feels good when my friends watch it and enjoy it, but it just feels so much better if people who I don't know leave comments and they just say, oh, good video, this helped me. Like that, I really appreciate that. And it's always something I wanted to do. And it's awesome that you guys do that. That's that's the thing. I was listening to the Smith Squad podcast once <laughs> by the Smith Plays. The Smith Plays is a YouTuber with about 3 million subscribers. I'm probably going to reference him a lot in this podcast because he is my biggest influence for making this podcast. He just has a very non-professional, chill podcast where he just talks about things. And that's that's kind of how I want to replicate him. And that's kind of what I want to do right here. But anyway, I was listening to his podcast. And he's a successful YouTuber. And he said one of his best tips to give to smaller YouTubers is just stay consistent and to consistently upload. And I'm really happy that in the last three weeks, I've uploaded a video every single day for three weeks straight, which is very rare for me like my old channel we uploaded once once every week maybe once every couple weeks we had absolutely no schedule whatsoever and I'm really happy that for three weeks straight I managed to upload like decent videos too like I usually try to get two or three like well uploaded like well edited videos to you guys a week like funny moments zombies or Roblox or Fortnite or something and then I give you some tutorials I'll give you some viewer suggested videos. I love doing the viewer suggested videos because I know you guys are going to enjoy those because you suggest them yourselves. So those are always fun to make. And it's just awesome. I love that feedback system you guys have because it's something I've never had. My old channel, the Game of Ninja Turtles, just nobody ever commented. And it, oh, it made me mad because like, I would I'll post a video and the first thing I'd always check is if I got comments because comments are truly the best part of making a video and just seeing what people think because like, I just, I was really thinking about it and like, my goal in life, man, I just, I want to make people's days better. I want to make people feel better. I want to make people happy. Like right now I'm, I'm living, I'm living the dream, but like this YouTube thing is like my dream. What I want to do, not so much like the gaming. I don't want to like play games for a living. I don't want to like, I mean, I mean, like, here's the thing. I just want to entertain. I want to make people feel better and make their day better. And if that's through gaming and making YouTube videos and creating content, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm not doing it so much for just playing games all day. <laughs> Sometimes that's what I've done this week because I've got I had the week off from school. But it's not about that. It's about 
hopefully making your guys' day a little bit better and entertaining you guys. I mean, I know I'm not like I'm not the best YouTuber in the world. I'm nowhere near the best YouTuber in the world. I mean, my content's nowhere near as entertaining as many of the bigger YouTubers who <laughs> live absolutely crazy lives and they can afford to make just absolutely insane vlogs and stuff. But I hope I can like just help you guys out, make you guys feel a little better about your day and that's my goal, man. I just want to help people. That sounds <laughs> that sounds so much more fun than than working like 9 to 5 and just doing the same thing every single day like I asked this question to three people on my podcast in total so far. I asked them, all right, so I go to school right now from 8 to 3.30 every single day. Well, I used to before the coronavirus, but eventually, hopefully, stay safe, y'all. Hopefully, we can go back to our normal scheduling where I go to school every day from 8.30 to 3.30. And every day at school, I just sit there and I'm like, I'm doing the exact same thing over and over every single day. And like, it's so boring. Like, what if when I get a job and I'm working nine to five, I get this exact same feeling where I'm just stuck in this continuous loop that I can't break out of. And everybody who I asked that question to in my podcast, they've said, that's how it's going to be. Now, obviously not everybody feels about that, about a nine to five job. I mean, if you're working a nine to five job, that's great. Cause like you've got steady income and that's awesome. But like for me, I just feel like working a nine to five job would get old. It would get repetitive and eventually boring. I mean, yes, it's steady income, which is good. But I just, I don't want to get bored, man. And like school is so boring. It's absolutely terrible. I suppose probably a job and school are much different though because job you have much more freedom and school I'm confined to a desk for the entire day where all I can do is sleep and write and do math problems, which is absolutely terrible experience. But yeah, like these are the types of subjects that I'm going to look back on because someday I'm going to be working a nine to five job probably. I mean, hopefully not, maybe. And I'm going to be looking at myself and I'm like, you're stupid. Working a nine to five job is absolutely nothing like going to school every day like you have a lot more freedom working nine to five and like if I'm thinking that right now future me watching right now that's awesome because then I know that I've improved I'm doing some self-evaluation and I know that right now I'm saying complete nonsense and I'm stupid so yeah but that's that's how I feel man like I love doing this I love making content for you guys I love making these videos that hopefully once again make your day better I mean that, that's kind of the goal or help you guys out like my tutorial videos I hope they help you out and help you get like make your redstone builds. I got you covered. If you want to suggest something, leave it in the comments below. I got you. But yeah, man, that's my goal, dude. That's what I want to do. And I want to keep it chill. I don't want to be fake. That's one of the reasons why I got this podcast, just to keep it real with you guys. If you guys notice me start thinking I'm just the best thing ever, you just call me out for it and just, I'll address it in the podcast, man. That's why I got this podcast. I'm going to try to keep it chill. I'm going to try to keep it real with you guys because that's how I like it, man. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to uh, stage like every one of my videos. That's just, I hate doing that. Like, I feel like there's too many people doing that in the YouTube scene these days, and I, I don't want to do that. I want to. Here's my goals for my YouTube channel, man. So right now we're growing at a great rate. Like I thank you guys so much. We have well over 100 subscribers now, and that's absolutely awesome. Because I started three weeks ago, I believe. Yeah, three weeks ago I started uploading once every day, and over 100 subscribers in three weeks. That is absolutely insane. That's. It's really what I've always wanted to do. Like, I've always wanted to just have a YouTube channel where I can just have a little community to talk to. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build a community, and I'm trying to, like, play multiple games. I don't want to be confined to playing just one game. Like, I don't want to just upload Fortnite, because then all, I, all I'm going to be known as the Fortnite guy. You guys would only expect Fortnite from me. Now, that could be good, because if you're really good at Fortnite, then obviously you can make some amazing videos and get a whole bunch of views. And people would know what to expect. It's good for people to know what to expect from you. But, like, for me, man... Like if all you guys do is expect like Minecraft videos from me, then I'm just going to become known as the Minecraft guy. And I don't want to do that because that's a dangerous trap to get yourself into. Because what if someday Minecraft dies, which right now it doesn't look like that's ever going to happen. But someday Minecraft might die. And then what am I going to do? Switch over to Call of Duty. And then what do you know? Nobody wants me to post Call of Duty because I was just known as the Minecraft guy. So that's all they want me to post. So yeah, well, I'm just going to try to keep posting like COD, Minecraft, Fortnite, Roblox, everything. Maybe even Clash of Clans. Like, whatever game I'm feeling, whatever type of video, tutorial, guide, this advice, I don't really care. I'm just going to post it because I just want to have everything posted on my channel. I want to have multiple communities colliding, and we can just share ideas, and we can just chill. That's really my goal for this channel. I just want to build a nice community of the different gaming communities out there, like Fortnite players. Bring them in. Bring the Minecraft players in. Bring everybody in, and we can just chill, not be fake. No fakeness. None of that crap here, man. We're keeping it real, 100%. And the Smitty 058. But yeah, we're already on the third podcast, dog. That is, like, this started as a joke. Like, I've always wanted to do a podcast, and like, 
self-evaluating right now. I'm a person, if I want to do something, I usually get it done. But the problem is I get it done like I procrastinate so bad, dude. Like I get it done literally as late as possible. Like a few examples right now, I had all day to record this podcast and it's currently 11.59 p.m. It's about to hit midnight. Why am I recording right now? Why? Like I, my goal today was to get up and record a podcast. I'm recording a podcast right now, but I'm doing it at midnight. It's midnight right now. Why did I wait till midnight? And I don't understand why I do that, but I do it so consistently. Like I was taking a law and justice class, which is like criminal stuff. And my teacher assigns a project like once a week. It's usually a pretty decent sized project. And I have a whole week to work on it. And let's say it's due on Thursday. And I had from Monday, we'll say until Thursday. I would literally every single day, I would wait till Wednesday night and start at like nine o'clock and work until like one or two in the morning. And I just make things so much harder on myself. And I don't know why I do that, but I do it so like often I save things to the last second to get them done. Right now I have, I have a podcast in a history class that was due like a week ago and I don't know why I'm not doing that. I mean, I'm probably going to do it like tomorrow, but I don't know why I procrastinate so hard, dude. I don't know why I do it. It's definitely one of my weaknesses. I was in a leadership class and we were doing our SWOT analysis, SWOT analysis, I think it's called of ourselves, which is our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and I forget what T stands for, but <laughs> my biggest weakness I put was my procrastination because I literally wait to the last minute to do literally everything. It's currently midnight and I'm recording this podcast and I had all day to do it. Why do I do this? I don't understand. And like, oh my, like my YouTube, like starting Smitty058 back up again. I really started back in 2018. I started this channel and I told myself, all right, I'm going to upload every single day. I'm going to grind. I'm going to build a little community here. I upload like three videos and then I take a couple days off. I upload another video and then I just quit. I don't know why I do that. And then I wait till this year. I procrastinate again a whole nother year. And then finally I'm starting it up right now. And right now I have a lot of passion, a lot of drive and a lot of motivation to keep uploading to you guys. So I promise I won't stop. But like, why do I procrastinate? I don't understand why. Like I had this channel going last year. Why did I wait an entire year to reboot it? I don't understand why I do that. Like, like I posted like three videos and I expected myself to just get huge. That's not what's going to happen. Like I can share this advice now because it's really working for me currently. Once again, I'm not the best person ever. I'm not the best YouTuber ever, but here's the advice I can give to you guys. If you want your channel to grow, it's simply just to upload every day, upload every single day, because the more you upload every single day, the more likely one of your videos gets out there, the more likely your subscribers will come back daily and stay active in your content. And it's just, it's all around better, man. Like I was told it's better to make videos like millions of people are going to watch them and upload them more rarely like once a week and put all your effort into that video and do that and upload like once a week and I thought yeah man creating videos like once a week that are really good is is good but at my level man doing that it just doesn't work because people are going to get interested in your channel they're going to watch one of your videos that is really well done and then if you only upload once a week they're just going to watch that video and they might subscribe they might like but then they're going to forget about you and the next week you're going to upload the video and they won't be there anymore and that's the problem I have with that theory that you have to upload your best content only. And like, I'm going to be honest with you guys, like my best content, I upload like my best edited videos. I upload twice a week, two or three times a week. I upload like those funny moment videos. I, well, I kind of call them funny moments. By the time I'm done editing, none of it's funny to me anymore. (laughs) That's the thing about editing, man. After watching my videos hundreds of times, they're not hilarious at all. So I really can't judge what's funny anymore. (laughs) So that's the problem. I hope you guys find the funny videos are kind of funny, I guess. (laughs) But yeah, man. So I upload about two funny videos a week, which are very well done. Uh, My opinion videos were like my, let's talk about Black Ops 5. Those videos take a long time to make. And my Why I Hate Minecraft Bedrock. Those take a long time to make. And I I like making those videos a lot. And then I post viewer suggested videos. Those don't take very long to make the videos, but the buildings I make for you guys, like you guys suggest Minecraft builds and I build them. Those usually take a while. But the video process doesn't take long at all, which is why I really enjoy those videos. Because first... I know you guys are going to enjoy them because you guys are suggesting them, and usually they're pretty awesome. Your suggestions have been like a Minecraft, a, a house made of food, somebody suggested, and and uh, what was it? A house made of every single block in the game and a trap house, and it was absolutely awesome. Your guys' suggestions are very creative and awesome, and I thank you guys for that, and I really like making that content because I know you guys are going to watch it, and it's also very easy to edit, which means am I being lazy there? Kind of, but 
it's what you guys want to see and I really don't know how to improve it much so that's that's what I give you I give you guys what you want to see and those videos are very easy to make on my side which is why I really enjoy doing them that's definitely one of the reasons and then the other reason just because you guys like to see it obviously if you're suggesting it but yeah man that's and then oh yeah and then the podcast is uploaded every Sunday or Monday morning this one's definitely gonna be coming out on a Monday morning because it's it's midnight right now and I waited till the last second to record this for some reason I don't know don't ask me why that's literally just how I operate I wait till the last second to do absolutely everything and that's one day that's going to get me, but as of right now, it's not hurting me too bad. Besides, I have to stay up late now to record a podcast, but I don't know, man. Maybe this is when I'm in my prime, when I'm like, when I know I have to get something done, I just perform better. I kind of think there's truth to that. Like, let's go back to my law and justice project. Like, if I know it's due the next day, I'm going to put my best effort into it, and I'm going to grind it out. That's the thing about me. If I, if I have a goal set, I'm going to eventually get it done, but so often I procrastinate too long, man. Like, so let's see. Yeah, man, if I set a goal, I really get like, okay, in elementary school, I set a goal. I wanted to memorize the elements of the periodic table. So I memorized a song, the I'm sure you, the ASAP Science song, which I'm sure probably many of you know. And then I wanted to learn the nations of the world. So I memorized the nations of the world song by Animaniacs. Then I memorized the presidents of the world song by Animaniacs. And it's just, I want to learn how to do something. So I figure out how to do it. And like, I wanted to learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube in seventh grade. So I learned how to do that which is also very basic, by the way, but and like, I wanted, okay, I saw a cool car, so I saved up for it, and I got a car, I wanted to start this YouTube channel back up again, so I did that, and then finally, I wanted to start a podcast up again, so I started doing that, so like, I'm a person, if I, if I have a goal, I'm gonna probably reach it, but the only question is, when am I gonna do it, because it's so, so often, I just wait till the last second to get things done, and that's so stupid because I could have already had this channel building a year ago now because I started it a year ago, but I procrastinated and waited one more year. Now here I am. I've got only one year left till I graduate. That's kind of how I've always viewed my time, man. I've always just viewed it. All right, well, I've always had this feeling like, oh, well, you you have forever until you graduate. And like, it's all right. You can, you can, that's definitely a part of it. You can, all right. I'm like, I'm going to graduate. Like, it's nowhere in sight. I can procrastinate as long as I want. And like, now I'm realizing graduation is like, a little over a year away, just barely over a year away. I'm like, I got to start getting stuff done. So that's why I, that's honestly one of the reasons why I started up the YouTube channel again and why I started up the podcast. Cause I got to start getting things done, man. I got like, cause like oh, graduation, man. Like I really, I don't have many plans for what I want to do with my life. Like if I just fall into the system of everybody going to college and then we all go get nine to five jobs, is that going to be boring? Is that going to get old? Because from what I've been told from my, I mean, young and inexperienced friends, I should probably be asking adults these questions. Those nine to five jobs are going to get old and I don't want to get stuck in that constant loop. And I feel like if I just follow the system that everybody else does, that's going to happen. And like what I want to do is what I'm doing right here, making people's days better. Hopefully I think I'm doing and being an entertainer. I want to help people in some way. And if this is how I do it by making YouTube videos, that's great. That's what I want to do. And the great thing about this is I can set my schedule. I can upload whenever I want. And like, that's another one of my goals, man. I don't want to have a boss. Oh, that That's probably a lot of people's goals. I don't want to have a boss. Man. I'm, I'm not big into having somebody like tell me what to do, which I'm sure is what many people think. But like, if it's possible for me to not have a boss, that's definitely one of my goals in life. I don't want to have a boss. I want to help people make their day better. And I want to, I want to set my schedule and I just, I just want to be happy, man. I just, Oof, it's difficult. I'm so lost right now. Like, I really don't know what I do after high school. I don't know where I'm going to go. This is really interesting. Like, uh, editing and stuff is very interesting. Like, I've made an app. I've done some coding. It's it's fun. I'm interested in that stuff, but I feel like that's the type of stuff that's just going to get so old after a little bit because, like, if I just was, like, an editor for somebody, like, when I edit videos, I get extremely bored. Extremely bored. Like, it's insane how bored I get. But then, like, once I see your guys' feedback, that really it balances out the boredom. The boredom is removed once I see your guys' feedback because I no longer care that I was bored. I see good feedback. That means I made somebody's day better. I feel better about it. So yeah, it's it's really interesting, man. My future is so many opportunities. I really don't know what I'm going to do. Future me, if you're watching, hopefully you're doing something good with your life. <laughs> oh, man. So once again, thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. That's absolutely awesome. I haven't had 100 subscribers since 2014 which is the last time I hit this milestone. And back in 2014, I mean, times were much simpler, but like my YouTube channel back in 2014 was like a fraction as good as this one is in my opinion. 
because like I was starting back in 2014. My first YouTube video I ever ever uploaded was in February of 2013, and it was it was oh, it was how to play the the song on Kino der Toten, <laughs> the zombies map, how to play the music in that map, and it it was a pretty well done video I recorded with my iPod fourth generation, but. <laughs> That was my first video ever, and now I here I am today, and I think I'm making pretty good content. And it's just, I really enjoy doing this, and it's it's so much fun, man. It's so much fun. But what I want to do right now is I want to, I want to set goals for the for the for my channel, dude. I want to set goals because like, right now there's people in the comments who are really being nice, really being generous. They're telling me like, oh wow, you deserve one million subs. Your editing is so good. Like, thank you for that. Like, that's awesome that you guys are saying that. Like, that's the type of stuff that keeps me going. So. One of my goals is I want to hit 1,000 subscribers someday. That is a huge number, 1,000 subscribers. I've only gotten half of that before. I've gotten to 570. But, oh, my, I couldn't even imagine having 1,000 people subscribe to me. Like, imagine I upload a video and, like, a couple hundred people get a notification maybe. That would be absolutely incredible, dude. If people, if there's a lot of people watching my videos and leaving feedback, like, I mean, there is now, I'm going to have crazy motivation to get stuff done and that's why I'm motivated right now to keep going because you guys are being awesome you guys are incredible and I enjoy it so much I enjoy it so so much <sighs> yeah man it's awesome it's absolutely awesome that's one of my goals what, what other goals should I have oh I want to continue to upload every single day I want to see how long I can keep this streak going the Smith plays the guy who I look up to and take inspiration from he was also a zombies youtuber and he I think he uploaded every day for about three years, which is a very impressive record, but I've already been doing it for three weeks, which is almost three years if you just take off a couple, like, thousand days. But, like, that three weeks has gone by so fast, man. It's gone by so fast. Like, time goes by in the blink of an eye. Like, it's just, it's the most cliche thing to ever say, but it's so true, dude. It is so true. Like... I was talking with my friend Nacho the night before New Year's Eve of 2020, and I was like, where's the time gone, bro? How are we already here? Like, 2015 was half a decade ago. Half a decade. <laughs> We're closer to 2030 than we are to 2010. Like, where has the time gone? Oh, it just, it goes by so quick, and I'm so, I feel like I'm just so fascinated with this idea of time, dude. Time is so interesting, and I'm just... I'm constantly thinking about like the future. And I think that's a problem. I was listening to the Smith squad podcast. Once again, one of the things he says is that as a society, we just get so caught up in the future. We're always thinking to the future. We're always never living in the present. We're always like, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do in 10 minutes? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And like, it's good to be prepared for things. It's very good to be prepared for things. So it's good to look ahead. But at the same time, like, do we do it too much? Do we look ahead too often and just think about the future too much? Like, I know for me personally, I probably get the thought every day of like, what am I going to do when I graduate? What am I going to do? What am I going to do at school this year? What am I going to do for sports? What am I going to do for my YouTube video tomorrow? It's just, I'm constantly thinking about the future and I just got to chill. I got to look around me and think, here I am right now. This is what I got right now. The future can come later. I, I should definitely be prepared for things, but like, I just got to live in the moment, man. And I totally agree with the point he made. He just said, we got to live in the moment. We're so caught up in the future. We're just constantly thinking about what's going to happen later and we just got to live in the moment we just got to live all we got is what we got right now we can't change the past we can't change the future this is what we got and we just got to enjoy it we just got to live it man we just got to live it and like this year has been insane dude this year has been absolutely insane like who would have thought oh siri sorry i just hit siri sorry siri please stop who would have thought when 2020 started that like we would have this many huge events happen. Like, obviously, Rip Kobe. I mean, it's only been three months. Jeez, it's only been three months. We've had, we've lost Kobe. We've had, like, impeachment, that whole deal. Uh, well, we're in election year. We've had coronavirus. What else have we had? We've definitely had some other things. But, like, this year has just been so crazy. It's been, it's only been three months. Oh, yeah, by the way, for coronavirus, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I'm from a relatively small community, so I should I should be fine. I'm doing good. Hopefully, you guys are doing good. And like, oh man, <laughs> that's the thing. Like last Sunday, I got the call or I got the I got the news that my school would be canceled this week, and that led to the most productive, unproductive week of my life. I would call it. All right, I'm told to self quarantine myself, so I'm like, all right, I'll stay I'll stay in the house pretty much the whole week. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'll stay inside. And, like, once I heard that, I was like, all right, well, 
I guess my only goals for the day is really to get a YouTube video up, and that's what I did. I uploaded a video once every day of this week for the entire time I was quarantined. I mean, I could have left the house pretty safely, but I was I was playing it safe. But yeah, I uploaded a video once every single day, and that was really my only goal for the day. And like on Monday, I told myself, all right, this time's gonna fly by. We gotta just enjoy every day here. And like, like sitting here thinking about time, like I'm watching the timer on the podcast go up and up and up. It looks like it's going so slow, like 25 minutes, 13 seconds, 25 minutes, 15 seconds. It's going so slow. But like, when you look back at time, like a couple days later, it feels like it was like five seconds. Like a week from now, I'm going to be recording my next podcast. And I'm going to be looking back at this one. Like, it feels like it was like two minutes ago when I recorded that. It's so weird how time works. When you're sitting here in the present thinking about it, it goes by so slow. But when you look back on it in a couple of days or weeks, it feels like it feels like everything went by so quick. And it's so true. It's so accurate when people say time flies by in the blink of an eye, which is cliche, but it's so accurate, man. It's absolutely accurate. It's the 100% truth. It is the 100% truth. Yeah, man. But oh, yeah. So I just I had to discuss these solo things because lots has happened this week. Lots has happened. Lots in the news. Lots of everything. And it's, it's going to be a very interesting week to see how the rest of this plays out, to see how the rest of this coronavirus deal plays out. But I really don't know. I'm very uncertain. That's our problem is we're very uncertain for the future. But we just got to live with what we got now. We just got to live in the present, man. We just got to live in the present. It's good to prepare. It's good It's good to tell people what to expect. But, like, we just got to live now, man. We just got to live now. So, yeah, that's my deep take on everything. <laughs> I have a couple of questions that I'm going to – I'm just going to state my opinion. These are We're going to go back to gaming now. Just because I'm trying to extend this podcast is because I'm at 26 minutes and 35 seconds and I'm just trying to add some time onto it because I feel like that's not enough. So let's keep going. Like, my goal is to keep these things going for an hour, but like, I'm the type of person, man, during the day, my mind is like constantly racing. I'm constantly having ideas. I'm constantly thinking, like, I'll, I'll use this example again. I was taking the ACT, the big college preparation test. It tells you how good you are and like, how it tells colleges basically how smart you are and how ready you are to go to college. And like, it's, it's basically like one of the only tests that matters in high school. It's the only thing high school should prepare you for is the ACT. And like, I'm just taking this test and I'm having such a hard time focusing because like my brain is constantly running ideas. What am I going to do for the podcast? What are some YouTube video ideas? And I just, I'm focusing on everything except for the test I'm taking. And this is a very important test. And I don't know why that is. I don't know why that happens, but that's really just how I am, dude. And like, the thing about me is, like, the thoughts I have in my head, man, like, I'm so bad at putting them into words, which is another reason why I'm trying to do this podcast, because, like, I have so many thoughts constantly racing in my head, but then putting them into words, I just, I can't do it very well. I can't make it sound good, and I hope this podcast podcast helps me improve that, because that would be absolutely awesome. So, yeah, so podcasts are tough for me to do for that reason, man. I'm not good at doing this stuff, but hopefully I improve. Hopefully I improve. And, like, the thing is about podcasts, man, they're like, they're really overwhelming. Like leading up to this podcast, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to talk for one hour into the mic. I mean, I don't have to talk for one hour, but like, that's my goal. And right now it's looking like I'm not going to make one hour because I'm like through all my topics and I'm only 28 minutes in, but like, I'm like, I got to run, I got to talk for one hour into this microphone with nobody else here. And I got to keep the conversation going. Think about how difficult that is. That is like, I'm not good at that at all. Some people are incredible at doing that. Some people are really good at doing that. But then there's me, and I'm like, I'm not good at doing this at all. And this is, and I hope to improve at doing this, but maybe that's why I waited so long to start this podcast. Cause I was just like, oh, I really don't want to do it because it's going to take so long and it's going to take a lot of thinking. These podcasts, I do think a lot about these. Like, I, I've got a book written out in my notes right now. My brother, he asked me the other day, why are you writing a book in my iPhone notes, and I was like, oh, I'm just coming up with ideas for the podcast, <laughs> so yeah, but it's like, they're very overwhelming for me, because I have to say so much, in so much time, and I'm not good at that at all, if you know me personally, you know, I'm not, I'm not the big talker of the group, but hopefully this helps me improve with that, so it's awesome, uh, another thing, if you guys are still listening right now, you're probably interested, like, I'm down to, like, chat with any of you guys, if any of you guys want to be guests on the podcast, Leave a comment down right now if you're interested. I mean, if you're still listening, that's awesome, dude. Welcome. We're still going. I must be doing something right if you're still listening. But, like, if you want to be on the podcast, if you got something to say, you can just leave a comment down there saying I'm interested to come on. And you have to have a Discord and, like, a decent mic. So make a Discord account and a decent mic because I chat over Discord with my friends and my guests. But, yeah, if you want to be on the podcast, I'm, I can definitely get you on. If you got something to say, 
get on here. And if you want to look back on it in a couple of years, get on here. <laughs> Now's your time. Leave it in the comments if you want. And that's awesome. But yeah, man. That's it, dog. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer a few gaming questions right now just because we're trying to add time onto this podcast. And hopefully you guys are still listening and enjoying that Minecraft game or zombie game that you're playing right now or whether you're just vibing. But <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Here's my questions that I got for myself. How did I get into video making? All right. I wonder how I got into video making. That is a very good question. I remember the day I asked my parents to start a YouTube channel. It was back in 2013, February. And like, at that time, being on YouTube was just the biggest thing ever. Like, life was way simpler back then. YouTube videos were a lot less better, a lot less well-made than they are today. They were much more simpler. And if you were on YouTube, you were just the coolest person ever. You could say, look, I'm on YouTube. That's awesome. You can watch me online any time of the day. That was a huge achievement. And when my parents were like, yeah, sure, you can make whatever this this YouTube account, whatever that is, I was like, oh, let's go. And I was just, I was so hyped up, man. And I, so ever since I was young, I just had that spark that I like to make videos and put myself out there. And then again, I made a Call of Duty Zombies Easter egg song tutorial, and I threw that out there. And then I made a Shangri-La another zombies Easter egg song. And I put that out there and then eventually I took inspiration from dude perfect. And I started making trick shot videos, which probably many people do. I mean, I just started using an iPod four and iMovie on there and I made those videos and I'm going to be honest, like my first videos, they were, they were pretty well done. So I guess I've always just had this interest in, in making videos and editing. And like over the years, I've just constantly been editing. I've like for my school projects, I get a lot of school projects that I have to edit. I make a lot of YouTube videos and I've just gotten pretty good at editing. And you guys really leave very generous comments down there when you're talking about my editing. You say it's really good, which which I appreciate a lot. That There's nothing better being an editor than hearing that your edits are good. It's like, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of true of every job. If you're a farmer, you want your, your, you want your product to be good. If you're an editor, you want your product of editing to be good. So that's awesome, dude. Like I appreciate you guys so much. All right, that's that's my history of video making. I started back in 2013, and I pretty much just I loved it right away, and I've just been grinding it out for seven years now, and I I see no plans of stopping. I really don't want to stop making videos. It's so much fun. It's so, and if I can keep building communities, that would make it like 50 times better. Like if nobody was watching my videos, I could see myself stopping. But since you guys are watching and being so active, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm gonna keep going. Inspirations for your videos. My biggest inspirations. All right, I gotta take a break. Oh, I've been grinding. I'm not professional. I'm just sitting in like this very uncomfortable chair that doesn't even have a backrest, so I gotta gotta stretch out. <clears throat> All right, biggest inspirations. I really look up to PewDiePie in the in the sense that he's got a fan base where he can upload literally any type of video, any type of video. He could upload some random, really terrible game, and he would get millions of views, and people would find it funny. Part of it's because he's just a really good content creator and he's a hilarious dude. And part of it's that he like he has that freedom to upload whatever he wants. Minecraft, I don't even know what other games he plays, meme reviews, and that's not a game, but he makes meme reviews, plays Minecraft, and he can play whatever game he wants. He'll get millions of views and people will love it. And like that's what I, how I want my channel to be. I can just post whatever I want and you guys will hopefully enjoy it. And so I look up to him in that sense. And also I look up to obviously the Smith Plays for inspiration for this podcast. And he's... He's shown me, like, you don't got to be a professional to do these podcasts. You can just sit down with a mic and just talk, and some people want to listen, and that's awesome. So I definitely look up to him. (sighs) Those are my two biggest YouTube. Mm, Those should be my two biggest YouTube inspirations. That should be about it, really. I honestly can't even think of anybody else who inspires me to make YouTube videos. No. No, that's, that's really about it. PewDiePie and the Smith plays. Wow, those well, they're definitely my two biggest. There might be some more that I'm not thinking of, but those are the two biggest for sure. All right, uh, gaming opinions. My best COD. <laughs> I was actually arguing with Nacho for this. I claimed that Black Ops Three is better than Black Ops Two, which is very controversial in the community. I think about nobody would agree with that. But like when you think about a man, Black Ops Three is the much more well done game. It looks a lot better. It's got a lot more content. It's got campaign dead ops arcade 2 a zombies campaign 16 zombies maps that all look great they're all good maps every single map in bo3 is a good well done finished map and then they've got multiplayer and campaign and then you go into bo2 
and you've got like well like eight zombie like ten zombies maps maybe and like three of them probably like half of them are just like sections taken out of certain maps so they're not that special they're not unique so like and like bo2 it really only has two amazing maps buried is great and then origins of mob of the dead are amazing and you look at bo3 it's got origins <laughs> and it's got even better maps so, uh, I guess I'm only looking at zombies right now. For So for zombies, BO3 is better. For campaign, Black Ops 2 is definitely better, even though I never played it. But just judging off what the community says, they would everybody would say Black Ops 2 is better. Multiplayer-wise, that is where it gets tough because Black Ops 2's multiplayer was just perfectly, perfectly balanced as all things should be. And it was so perfect. Like Assault Shields, Pun Cakes, Claymores, LSATs. Dude, there was... The thing about Black Ops 2 is it pleased every single community in Call of Duty, man. The trick shotters were happy. The the sweats were happy. The ninja diffusers were happy. Ninja diffusing in Black Ops 2 is so much fun. It's so... Like, yeah, the funny people like Vanoss. Oh, my God, dude. Va- oh, yes. Vanoss is definitely an inspiration. Like, everybody who edits funny videos looks up to Vanoss because he is about as good as they get. His old BO2 videos were absolutely incredible. And what he does today, I don't watch him as much anymore, but I'm pretty sure he can upload whatever video he wants and his fans will enjoy it. So I really respect that. And I look up to Vanoss as well. But yeah, man. BO2 pleased all the communities, man. The trick shotters, the sweats, the, the, the trolls, the noobs. It was perfect. And then Black Ops 2 came. And the trick shotting community got a little less. And the sweats were sweating. But I think... It definitely didn't please everybody as well as BO2 did, so I'm going to give multiplayer to BO2. But to me, BO3 took what Advanced Warfare did with the new movement, and they literally made it perfect. And they... Oh, okay, well, the microtransactions, too. The game did become kind of pay-to-win. There were, There's like 40 melees in Black Ops 3. There's literally 40 melees. That's absolutely insane to think about. <laughs> okay, I, I guess when you kind of think about that, you really see how greedy Activision got with the title of Black Ops 3. They saw how popular it was, so they threw in like 80 DLC weapons. Which, by the way, my brother has all of them, which is, that goes to show you, that's the people they want. They want everybody to spend hundreds of dollars on their game, and it's it worked so well. But then they got too greedy. They do that for Black Ops 4, they add a season pass, nobody cares, and now we all hate them. Because all they do is they want our money, and they... The thing about Activision, man, is they're showing no signs of trying to improve their call duties, like... They're going to keep doing the same thing. They're going to keep bringing microtransactions in. They're going to keep reskinning like the same weapons over and over every single year. And it's really getting old. That's why, like, Black Ops 5 or whatever the Call of Duty title is this year, it's it's probably going to be the last one I get unless it's, like, absolutely incredible. Because if it's just another copy-paste from Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, then I'm I'm going to be very, very disappointed, man. I'm going to be very disappointed because, like, we haven't had a good COD since Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 was an amazing COD. It's the second-best COD of all time, in my opinion. I didn't really play MW2 or MW3 all that much, so I don't really have opinions on those. But Black Ops 3 was so good, and, like, Black Ops 4 came and it was literally Black Ops 3 except worse and it didn't look as good. And now if what if Black Ops 5 comes and it's just Black Ops 4 except it's worse and doesn't look as good, that would be terrible. <laughs> We're going the wrong way there. And that's Call of Duty's just been it's just been dying since Black Ops 3. And like if Black Ops 5 sucks this year, whatever the COD title is, then they just need to take a year off of development for Call of Duty. They just need to wait till 2022 to release their next game for sure because the community like the community will still buy the game. They'll spend all the money. COD will be one of the biggest selling games of the year, but like just do it for your fans, man. Take a year off and just make a better COD. Just develop it better. Like, just please, just don't make it about the money for once, Activision. Please, just take a year off if the next COD sucks. But yeah, what was that video about? I don't even remember. I don't even remember what the question was for this. History of gaming, maybe? I don't, I don't even know what that question was. <laughs> oh, no, that was the best COD. That's what that question was. So, anyway, the best COD ever. <sighs> it goes... Oh, my God. The best COD ever. It it's got to go to Black Ops 3, but just because BO2 is older, I give it to BO2. I give it to Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 made everybody happy, and BO3 just made me happy. But Black Ops 2, great campaign, multiplayer zombies. Black Ops 2, best COD ever. Black Ops 3, a very, very close, very close second. Just that the campaign sucked, I've been told, but I don't care about that at all. So I'll put BO3 lower. BO2 number one, which many people would agree with. All right. Where are we at? Oh, best zombies map ever made. Best zombies map ever made. Like I'd like to give a top five, but there's so many zombies map, I would definitely forget at least one. Let's see. I could probably do top five. I'll just name off some maps that are really good. Gorod Krovi is definitely up there. Dude, Derizendrak is so overrated. I'm sorry, everybody. Like every everybody likes Derizendrak for some reason. 
I, I really don't like Dreisendrock. <laughs> That's a very unpopular opinion. But the thing about Dreisendrock is they just took Origins and I don't even know if they made it better. People say they made it a lot better. But like, I don't even know, man. I think Origins is much better than Dreisendrock. But uh, the thing about Dreisendrock is I, it's definitely my least played map on Black Ops 3, which may come as a shock to many. So I don't know much about that map at all. I just know how to make the Storm Bow. That's literally about it. I don't know how to do anything else, which is my lack of playing might be why I don't like the map. But my lack of playing might be a result of why I played the map, map a couple times and I didn't enjoy it, so therefore I refused to play it. So, But Dreisendrock, man, like if I had to pick right now between Zetsubo no Shima and Dreisendrock, I'd rather play Zetsubo. I'm not even joking. Like, I don't really like playing Dreisendrock. It's just, it feels like, I don't know. I don't really know what it feels like. It just doesn't feel like it has much of an identity. It just feels like Origins, except slightly worse. So Dreisendrock is not on my top five, which many people would disagree with. Lots of people would <laughs> disagree with that, but... All right, number one's Origins. Origins is the best map ever made. I'm struggling with Mob of the Dead, though, because I think a lot of people put Mob of the Dead at two, then, if Dreisendrock's not up there. But Mob of the Dead, I also feel, is overrated because it's not as incredible as people think. Some people think it's the best map ever made. Absolutely not. And I'm struggling because Gorod Krovi might be better than Mob of the Dead. But then I think about it. No, no, no. No, Mob of the Dead's taken second. It's taken second. All right, Mob of the Dead. So we got Origins, number one. Mob of the Dead, number two. Number three. I think number three would be Gorod Krovi. I think I can't think of anything else that's better than Gorod. Off the top of my mind, anyway. So we got Origins. Then we got Mob of the Dead. We got Gorod. What, what, I, don't, I can't even think of any other maps, man. Like, some under, underrated maps. Shangri-La is a really good map, man. It's so underrated. And, like... Wait, what's the map? I just... Buried? Buried's underrated. Die Rise? Die Rise is not a terrible map. It's not terrible. People say it's just terrible. It's not awful. It's also underrated. But yeah, man. It's crazy. So I can only name three maps, I guess. I can't even think of the other ones. I guess... I can't... I gotta think more about this to put it in top five. But my top three... Gorod, Origins, and Mob of the Dead. Drys and Drak doesn't even make the top five because I really don't like Drys and Drak. I don't know why. I just never played it. And I don't enjoy playing it. I don't know why I'm like that, but... A lot of people will disagree with that. About everybody would disagree with that. But I'm sorry, that's just, that's just how it is. And you probably just lost a lot of respect for my COD opinions after that. <laughs> my thoughts on the current state of YouTube, man. <sighs> the expectations in YouTube right now are just so much higher than they used to be. Like, when I started back in 2013, everybody was bad at making videos. Everybody. Like, there was, like, Smosh, I think. Those are, like, the only people who were, like, professional, like, actual like corporation people that just grinded and like Ryan Higa he was he was really good at making videos but like yeah man the bar the bar used to be so much lower and nowadays everybody's just got so like it's so much harder to make it on YouTube these days because everybody's got the best gaming setup everybody's got the newest technology because kids start they want they see these YouTubers when they're like six years old and they start begging their parents for all these all these new mics and games and streaming setup stuff and monitors and all that from a very young age so they get it all and then like you get like some really young sweats and you have to compete with them and there's just like millions of people out there trying to trying to become a youtuber becoming a youtuber is just i feel like in my generation it's probably one of the most wanted jobs to be a youtuber i don't know why that is that because we're lazy i think it's because a lot of people want to be youtubers because they think it's just really lazy like i'm not i'm not like i'm not like a big enough youtuber to give like to give an opinion on that I don't know if it's being lazy I don't know how hard it is to be a big YouTuber I hope someday I understand but for right now I don't know I just vibe I just make a video it's not that much hard work making a video I guess so I wouldn't call it hard work right now but it's so hard to make it in the YouTube scene these days because there's so many people and I feel like everybody in my generation wants to be a YouTuber and we've just all had this because we grew up with YouTube and we've always just watched these YouTubers and we've wanted to be like them so we just we just beg for everything, and we just want to we want to get the right stuff. And everybody's got a great setups. Everybody's getting good at editing. It's so hard to compete. You have to be unique, and you have to be special. And it's just, it's really hard to stand out. And I hope to stand out because, like, I want to keep it real with you guys. I want to be known as the guy who just keeps it chill. I don't want to have any any controversy. None of that here. I want to keep it real, not be fake, don't be staged. Hopefully, not get any scandals or anything. <laughs> Maybe just give my opinion on this podcast. You guys listen, and we could just keep it real. That's awesome. That's my goal. If I could do that with my with my channel, that'd be awesome. I think that's kind of what makes me different from other people. Like I I try not to clickbait at all. Like 
the Paul brothers. I mean, they like to clickbait a lot. I mean, everybody likes to clickbait these days. Everybody does. And I just try to keep it real. I just try not to. I mean, like, will it benefit me if I clickbait? Yeah, but I just, I can't get myself to do that because then I'll just go back on the rules I made. I mean, I'm sure someday I'll make a clickbait video and people will come back to me saying this and they'll be like, well, there you go, you're a hypocrite. And like, well, at the end of the day, everybody's a hypocrite, first of all. But like, yeah, man, like it's, I'm probably going to make a clickbait video sometime, but like, I hope I don't. I hope I don't. That's, that's the main gist of it. Someday it's going to happen, but right now I'm going to try not to. I hope I don't ever make a clickbait video. That's not me, man. But yeah, it's just so hard to make it on YouTube because you have to deal with those huge content creators who get so much media publicity and they just got these huge brands and they just get, they, they clickbait and they just got professional editors and they're, they're just so professional. Whereas back in 2013, everybody just cringy intro. Hi guys, like the game volume is loud. They're just like muffled. You can't even hear them. They're like, hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a Minecraft tutorial video. And like the videos were just terrible and it was easy to make it back then. Well, if you were good, it was easy to make it. But now if you're good, you have to stand out somehow in a lot better way. And it's just, it's so much more difficult. And I think I'm figuring that out. It's, it's really difficult to stand out. So I really just, I try my hardest to, to be different, just to be chill. So yeah, that's my current thoughts on the state of YouTube. It's really difficult. And if you want to be a YouTuber, good luck. It's, it's going to be tough, but good luck to you. Whew, these are some long answers. The thing about these podcasts, like I start getting lightheaded from talking so much. I'm not used to talking in sentences for, lots of sentences for one hour straight and I like get lightheaded from talking so much and sitting in this very uncomfortable chair of which my bed is right behind me and I just want to go sit in that and go to sleep but I know I have to finish this because as I said earlier I'm the person if I got to get something done I'm going to get it done no matter what I'll stay up literally as late as I have to I remember back in like probably like seventh or eighth grade I had this project that I waited to start at like midnight and I grinded until like four in the morning and I and I brought it to school the next day, and I, I don't know, I probably got a decent grade on it, but I grinded till four in the morning to get it done. Like, if I'm going to get done, something done, I set a goal, and I'm the type of person, I'm going to get it done eventually, even though I procrastinate every single time. It's currently 12.36. I've procrastinated to start this podcast. I had all day to do it. I'm doing it right now. I don't know why. Maybe it's just, it's, it's probably just a bad habit I got myself into. But anyway, we already talked about that. I'm a procrastinator. I'm very bad at procrastinating. That was our thoughts on the current state of YouTube. My first console ever. All right. My first console. I guess if you can call like a Game Boy a console, it was probably the Game Boy. But the Wii, man. The Wii. That is the best thing ever made. Even though it's not my favorite console ever. But the Wii. Oh, so many memories, dude. Such simpler times. I remember me and my brother just playing Wii Call of Duty Zombies on Kino. And us playing S Super Mario Galaxy. Super Mario Galaxy, yes. That game was way ahead of its time, man. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, absolutely incredible games. If you've never played them and you have a Wii, get Super Mario Galaxy right now. I mean, you're like 15 years late, but get them. Just get, they're still great. If they came out today, I would buy them in a heartbeat. They are amazing games. But yeah, the Wii was probably my first, my first console. And then I remember my dad used to watch Netflix on it every night and he, he'd leave it on and eventually it overheated and rip which is probably a similar story to many other people's Wii's. I think I've heard stories like that, but yeah. Our Wii ended up overheating, which is a sad day. <laughs> but yeah, the Wii was awesome, man. Wii Sports, that's that's the one of the best games ever. It is, it really is. Like recently before basketball games, me and the, me and the boys, we'd go over to a friend's house and we'd, we'd play Wii Sports, and it, that game still goes hard, man. That game is so much fun. But yeah, that's, that was my first console. As far as my favorite console... This is a very easy question. It's it's the Xbox 360. That is my favorite console ever made. It's where I started. It's where I used to... Oh, my God. I have videos of me from, like, 2014 of me playing, like, Call of Duty, and I'd go on, and I could see I had, like, 15 friends playing. Like, that type of stuff just doesn't happen anymore for us. We don't have 15 friends playing anymore. Like, we have, like, maybe, like, two or three. But back then, we were all grinding on the Xbox 360 Black Ops 2. I had 15 friends on at once. I couldn't even imagine if I came on and saw that today. That'd be absolutely insane. 15 people playing the exact same game, all playing BO2. That's how much we used to grind. And 360 is my favorite console because it was just, it was like it was perfect, man. It was a it was a beautiful console. It was awesome. And so I started. It's where I started my YouTube channel. Oh my god, dude, the nostalgia is hitting me. <laughs> yeah, that console is absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10. The Xbox 360, and then the Xbox One is absolute terrible console. Oh my goodness, the Xbox One is absolutely the only thing Xbox One has going for it is backwards compatibility. If I wasn't able to play BO2 on an Xbox One, I wouldn't have an Xbox One right now. The Xbox One is absolutely terrible. Like, I half the time, I can't even get it to start. 
and other half I can't get applications to open because it tells me oh wait a few minutes and then try again like nope if you say wait if you wait a few minutes you're telling me wait like 10 hours before you come back and try and yeah it's, ugh, I hate the Xbox one so much and it's ugh. it's not it, the PS4 definitely won the console we're not like the console wars old news I know but the PS4 was definitely better than the Xbox one but then again the Xbox 360 was millions of times better than the PS3 because the PS3 controller in itself makes the PS3 lose the PS3 controller is the worst thing ever so just just off the controller the PS3 loses everything and the Xbox 360 was awesome but yeah man that that's that's my favorite console the Xbox 360 old games I used to play all right well Super Mario Galaxy Wii Sports Super Mario Galaxy God, name those games oh Mario Kart Wii that's everybody Wii Sports Mario Kart Wii Super Mario Galaxy Dungeon Defenders, that game was absolutely awesome. I used to grind Portal 2 back in the day. All the CODs, GTA, GTA San Andreas. <laughs> GTA San Andreas, that game was also ahead of its time. Oh, the PS2, I forgot I had a PS2. Oh my, oh Madden like 09 on the Wii or something like that. Oh my, I play so many old games that I forgot about and I'm just now remembering them. This is awesome. This is why I love doing this. This is a fun time. Oh man, but like the more you bring back those memories, the more you think about it. And it's just, oh, it hits deep, man. It really hits deep. Wow, wow. It feels like it was just yesterday. I was picking my three v three team in Madden on the Wii. <laughs> wow, that's incredible, dude. What if twenty twenty goes by as like the twenty twenties go by as fast as the twenty tens? That is such a weird thought, dude. Because like I'm expected to have like children by the end of this decade. Like what? Like what? <laughs> oh my god, that's how much is going to change by the end of this decade. It's in, like, I think about how much I've changed since 2010. That's a huge change. That's basically going to happen to me again through the 2020s, and that's an absolutely amazing thought, which is why I have this podcast. So 10-year-old me, 10 year older than me, if you're watching this right now, what's up, dude? Somehow I've managed to talk for 52 minutes. Hopefully it's entertaining. And, yeah, if you're still watching, you're awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, old games, uh, I, yeah, I answered all the old games I used to play. It's just all the CODs and all the Minecraft. OG Minecraft, that's good stuff. <sighs> Shoot, there's a lot of talking. It really wears me out, doesn't it? That's why I said these podcasts are so overwhelming when I'm thinking, like, I have to talk for one hour straight? That is a crazy thought to have. But then when you're done, like, I finished my first solo podcast, and it was so refreshing. There's something about it. Just saying what's on your mind, it makes you, and having others hear it, it. <sighs> It really just, it, it's refreshing. It makes me feel good. Like when I'm done with this podcast right now, I'm just exhausted. I want to go to bed. I'm like getting lightheaded from talking so much. But when I'm done, I'm just going to lay down and I'm going to be like, wow, that felt amazing, dude. Like just saying what I just said, it just felt good. You just put it out there and let others hear it. And maybe they relate to it. Like that's an awesome thought. And maybe that's going to happen with this. You never know. I hope this podcast gets big someday. I hope people get interested in it. But maybe, maybe I suck right now. I really can't judge. I don't know. I think I'm doing decent, but... Maybe I maybe I suck right now. I don't know. But yeah, man. Oof, I gotta take a breath. Oof. This really is a grind when you wait till the last minute to do everything, and you have to sit in this chair with no, no back support, <laughs> and stretch and get lightheaded from talking. All right. What are we sitting at? We're sitting at fifty-three minutes. I'll see if I can push this out for an hour for you guys. I'll keep answering some questions. Whew. Thoughts on Fortnite is the next question I had. Thoughts on Fortnite Battle Royale. So the thing about Fortnite is I started playing in Season 2, early Season 2, I believe. Probably like December, November of 2017. Because like, at the time, the Call of Duty was Modern Warfare World War II, I think. Yeah, World War II. And I was really enjoying that game. But then Fortnite came out, <laughs> and my friends Greenmeyer, Bracken, and Breadman... I think we're playing, and they invited me to play. At first, I was like, no, man. Call of Duty World War II is a fun game. I'm going to keep grinding this. But then they were like, no, dude, you got to come try out Fortnite. And I tried out Fortnite. My first game on, we land Flush Factory. I remember it. We land Flush Factory. I have no idea what's going on. The circle leads us all the way up to Pleasant Park, so we're on the way, way west side of the map, and we work our way up it, and we get the Victory Royale. <laughs> it was me, Bracken, my friend Jacob, and a random, and I'm pretty sure the random just carried us to the dub. Which back in the old days, you getting carried is like four bots still. But yeah, man, my first game, that's something I know for a fact. My first game of Fortnite Battle Royale was a dub. I No way I had any kills. I had no idea what was going on, but it was a dub. And I still remember, I still remember that game. And it's awesome, dude. 
And after that, you know, like all of us, I got my squad put together. And like every single night, we would just grind Fortnite. Every single night. Fortnite and its prime may be the best video game ever made. I, I could stand by that. Fortnite and its prime was one of the most fun video games. Maybe not like the best ever in terms of like content that it gives you. But in terms of how fun it is, dude, grinding with your squad back in Fortnite, that was, that was so much fun. Those are memories that we're never going to have back. We're never gonna experience that again. It's awesome, dude. It was it was really something special. Like it might be cringy. I'm talking about like video games like this, but like it's true, man. Grinding with your homies back in Fortnite, it was so much fun. And those times will never be back, man. Those oh, we really didn't know what we had till it was gone. And I, I feel so bad about it, but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and I made a couple montage videos of season two clips, so I still have it, I guess, to look back on. Which is why I love recording myself and looking back on what I've done. Because first of all, it makes me sad, but it's awesome. It's good to see how how far I've come. And it's fun. Whew, this has been a long wait. This has been a long, long, long talk. Long talk. I was, like, I ran out of topics back at like 30 minutes, and now we're sitting at 55 minutes, 50 seconds. And that's, it's crazy that I've kept the conversation going this long, which is, again, one of my goals. I want to, if I run out of topics, I want to be able to come up with stuff off the top of my head, which I'm currently not doing because I've just been answering questions off my notes. But yeah, I want to get better at this. So, next question. Oof, damn. Some sports. We can get into some real life sports. I don't know what kind of sports you guys play. Like I just recently had a friend on the podcast who did Vex robots. Vex robots. He like build robots to do specific challenges, and I had never heard of anything like that. And it made me wonder, like, how many events are there out there that I've never heard of? Like robot making events, like Vex, as he called it. Well, how many sports are there out there that I've never even heard of? <laughs> like, what did I see? Like tag. I know if professional tags out there. I see that. That actually looks like a blast. But there's professional tag. There's like. There's like WWE, oh, there's trampoline basketball, there's like WWE basketball, like how many other sports are there out there that I don't even know about? I'm sure there's a whole bunch of fun ones out there that I don't even know about, but like the first sports that I play, I just play basketball and, and uh, well, track, if we, rip track season this year, by the way, COVID-19 is really, really killing everybody off, like I feel bad for the seniors, man, like it's, it's good to get out of school, like everybody's like, oh, we hate school, we want to get out of school, but then you get out of school for more than a week and you're like, Okay, I kind of want to go back to school. School's, 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 a, school's, I'm struggling to say school's a fun place, but it is. It really is, man. And I want to enjoy my last year at school, year and a couple months now. And tomorrow I start my first day of online classes, so that's going to be absolutely hilarious if it goes as all the TikTok memes have shown me. My first day of class tomorrow should be a lot of fun. And I'm interested to see how that goes, but <clears throat> yeah, man, that's the sports. Just Fortnite, or I don't play Fortnite as a sport, but just. Track and basketball, man. Basketball is my main. Oof, favorite YouTuber. Wow, if I just had to pick one. Like, the most entertaining YouTuber right now, the person who I look forward the most uploading, is Logan Paul. And, I mean, in no by no stretch of the imagination, he's my favorite YouTuber. No, but the most entertaining one, I think, is Logan Paul right now, which is... Never thought I'd be saying that, but here I am in 2020 saying Logan Paul makes some fire content. Go check him out. Awesome stuff. My favorite YouTuber, though? Like, again, it comes back to the Smith place. He's awesome. PewDiePie's awesome. I I don't know if I can pick a single one. It's too difficult, man. It really is too difficult. Wow. I, I don't think I can. I'd go with the Smith plays over PewDiePie. He's had more of an impact, and he was played more of a role in my childhood. So I'll go my favorite YouTuber of all time. Smith plays. Let's go, Patrick. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I've answered many questions. I've answered so many questions. Oof. I, I should probably start wrapping this up. Like, right now, it just feels so refreshing to be about done with this. And I'm going to listen back to this someday, and I'm going to be like, awesome. But, like, once again, I hope you guys found some interesting information here. I hope you, if you're still listening, I hope you enjoyed the podcast, and I hope you're looking forward to more. Uh, again, if you want to be a guest on the podcast, you know, leave a comment. I'm going to read the comments, obviously. That's the best part of being a YouTuber. I just called myself a YouTuber. I am a YouTuber, man. I'm posting content every day. I'm a YouTuber. Let's go. And, like, I'm finally I'm finally getting momentum for this, for this, this dream of mine I have where I can build a community of people who want to watch my content, which is going to be awesome. I hope it comes true. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I hope it was good. I hope I didn't sound too repetitive or stutter or annoying. I really don't know. I never know until I listen back, I guess. But anyway, this has been Sminified Podcast episode number three. 
This was a solo podcast, and somehow I made it one hour. I have no idea how that happened, but hopefully I can do that again. And I think this podcast is helping me right now. I think it's helping me a lot, man. Right now, I'm just going off the top of my head, just saying things, and it's it's helping me. So let's go. That's our goals. Anyway, I want a thousand subscribers. That that'd be awesome, man. That that's a huge number. Gosh, I can't get a thousand people. Whew. That would be epic. If we, so if you guys want to share my channel, that would be greatly appreciated. But I'm not here to beg for stuff. But anyway, a thousand subscribers. I want to upload every day for as long as I can and try to beat the Smith plays record of three years, which probably won't happen because that's a long time. And in three years, I'm gonna probably be at college. Probably, yeah. Okay, I'm definitely gonna be at college. I'm definitely going to college. What am I even talking about? <laughs> but yeah, man. Those are my two main goals, 1,000 subs, an active community fan base, active viewers. I want to bring communities together and make just a chill, not fake. I want us to just hang out here, man. I just want to hang out. And I just want to upload the content I want to upload, upload some content you guys want to upload, and I just want us to have a good time, man. I just want to keep entertaining you guys. Hopefully, I'm doing that now. Hopefully, I can improve. If you guys enjoyed the podcast, leave a comment down below just giving your thoughts. I don't really care, man. I'll read anything. Just put it out there, man. Put it out there. It's good to just say what you think and, like, I'm going to go lay down on my bed now, and I'm going to think about this and how refreshing it was. Whew. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Sminify Podcast, episode number three. It's been a lot of fun saying all this stuff. If you're still watching, awesome. Love you. Subscribe, like, follow the socials. Number one podcast in the world. Yeah, yeah, clickbait. All right. Thank you guys so much. It's been Spinny058. Stay tuned. Next week, we're coming back at you, maybe with a guest. I really have no plans. Wow, so now I'm at the end of the podcast, and I don't want to end it. <laughs> hopefully you guys feel that way that like you don't want the podcast to end but it's got to end sometime right now thank you guys so much it's been smitty peace out thank you for everything thanks for 100 awesome see i'm just trying to make it longer all right peace out guys awesome thank you peace out that's that's the last thing i'll say <laughs>